one of the most unexpected releases from Sony this year. The Sony a7R Mark IV, now with 61 huge megapixels. The brand new Sony a7R Mark IV is their new high resolution sensored camera. The biggest difference between the a7R Mark IV and the 3 is its brand new stacked 61 megapixel CMOS sensor, as opposed to the a7R 3s 42 megapixel sensor, which is a gigantic jump. There are also a vast amount of differences between the two in terms of design as well as performance, and we'll go into those details now. Starting off with the main differences in design, the Sony a7R Mark IV has a brand new revamped mag alloy body, which now houses a gigantic grip, which rejoice for people with bigger hands that have been complaining over the last however many years that Sony have been doing mirrorless for, it's now a lot more comfortable to use. In addition to that, the actual body is now better weather sealed, there's better sealings and because of a couple minor changes in the body, such as taking out the coupling door on the battery door, allows the camera to be well protected. The buttons on the a7R Mark IV are a lot more responsive than the 3. They're a bit larger, they feel a bit more tactile, and you've also got a larger joystick at the back, which makes it easier for you to change your focus points as well as navigate through the menu. On top of the camera, you'll notice that there is a lock on the exposure compensation dial, so you won't accidentally knock it out of place. And the rear dial is now located on top of the camera instead of inside the back of the camera. However, this does give it a lot more access, so if you do have a bigger hand, it is easier to roll the back wheel to do your settings. Now, in terms of its viewfinder, it has a 5.76 million dot EVF, which is on the standard of the current Panasonic high-end cameras and the GFX100, which is super exciting. You get a nice and responsive and bright EVF with a lot of detail and frame coverage. Similarly, at the back of the camera, it's very similar to the a7R Mark III. You still have the same three inch tilt screen and all the buttons that you'll be familiar with, such as the function button, as well as the roll wheel to navigate through your menus. Furthermore, one of the biggest improvements on the Sony a7R Mark IV is they finally changed the construction of the doors on the side. Now, if you remember our video on the a7R 3 and the Mark 3, we complained about the doors being way too flimsy. And if you were using the camera for video and plugging in monitors, headphones, and mics, you would have doors flapping around everywhere and it didn't look very professional. Now with the a7R Mark IV, they've redone the hinges. So you have a nice cleaner opening on the hinges and easy access to all your ports. And I think that is a great improvement. On the right hand side, you still can house two SD card slots, but unlike the a7R 3 the SD cards that are taken in both slots are both STXC2 compatible, giving you the opportunity to use two fast cards in both slots. At the bottom, it still uses the same MPFZ1000 battery, but now with the extended grip, as well as the redesign of the body, the battery grip that is used for the a7R Mark IV is a bit bigger, however, it is more durable in terms of dust and moisture resistance. And before I forget, the SD card door doesn't use a switch anymore for it to open, and it's literally just a simple pullback and open, so you can have quick and fast changing without that tedious little switch pull-out business that you would have had to go through in the previous models. Moving on to the differences of the a7R Mark IV and a7R Mark III in terms of hardware. So the biggest difference and the most obvious one is the brand new 61 megapixel sensor. Now this is a gigantic improvement from the 42 megapixel sensor giving you a lot of high resolution detail while still preserving the same low light qualities as the a7R Mark III. Secondly, a big hardware improvement for the a7R Mark IV over the Mark III is that it has a digital audio interface hot shoe, which is compatible with Sony's brand new ECM B1M microphone, which does the audio to digital conversion in the mic to give you a basically noise-free and high quality audio transmission. Thirdly, if you do use your Sony a7R system for the studio, 
You'd be happy to know that the A7R Mark IV now has a five gigahertz wireless transmission. So if you don't like using wires, you can reliably use the A7R Mark IV to connect to your computer or smart device or router to basically transmit your photos across seamlessly. Now, if you still enjoy using a wired connection, it does have a USB-C port, which is rated at USB 3.2 to give you that fast connection. Speaking about ports on the A7R Mark IV, it does have your standard headphone, microphone, multi-USB port, as well as a PC shoe for external flash. And finally, the Sony A7R Mark IV has a revamped face detection autofocus system. It now has a 567 face detection plus 425 contrast detection autofocus system. And one of the most exciting features on that is that in video, you can record continuous eye autofocus and it's not limited to autofocus continuous anymore. We'll test that in a moment and we'll see how effective that is. Now, in terms of the similarities between the A7R Mark IV and the Mark III, they have a ISO range both of 100 to 32,000, expandable up to 100 to 2,400. There is an improvement in dynamic range though in the A7R Mark IV, giving you 15 stops of dynamic range, which is one stop more than the leading GFX 100, which is a big deal. Going through similarities as well, they both do 4K video up to 30 frames per second and Full HD up to 120 frames per second. And to assist with your video work or handheld shooting, the Sony A7R Mark IV still houses a 5-axis image stabilization system in the body to give you up to 5.5 stops of compensation. And if you do enjoy shooting that long range and shooting sports, the A7R Mark IV can shoot as fast as 10 frames per second. And for a 10 frames per second camera, plus a 61 megapixel sensor to produce images that quickly, it's gonna be one hell of a machine. So now we're gonna go take it out and see what the camera is like out on the field. So what I have on top of the A7R Mark IV right now is their brand new ECM B1M microphone. This microphone is one of the most unique microphones out there right now because it's got a eight microphone system that allows you to swap between three different cardioid patterns. So the first one is a super directional microphone, which is similar to your shotgun mic. And then you can swap it to have a wider unidirectional microphone kind of layout to get a slightly wider um, audio pickup. And then the last one is omnidirectional, which is like your standard stereo mic, um, which basically picks up all around you. And you have all three of these mic configurations in the one system. And what I like about it is one, it's streamlined. You don't really need to get power for it either because it just powers off the camera. And the way that it's designed is so slim and slow, kind of flushed into the body. You can still use your viewfinder, which I know a lot of shotgun on camera microphones protrude out and can be annoying to use. And I really like that about the B1M. They really thought about the design for it for the A7 series. The B1M isn't limited to just working on the A7R Mark IV. It is backwards compatible, so you can use it on their other camera systems as well. So right now, I'm testing the continuous eye autofocus in video, and it is tracking Josh's eye pretty well. I can see this little frame following him. And now I can't see your eye anymore, you're too far. But come back. Oh, it snaps back onto your eye. Hey, damn. That's pretty cool. So throughout that whole clip, I had Josh's left eye basically on lock. Didn't really have to press anything. Just had to set on continuous um, autofocus, hit that record button, and away it went. Just tracked him the whole way. Absolutely brilliant. We have eye autofocus in video. Just some quick thoughts on using the camera after a while. So the grip makes a huge difference. I actually can hold this a lot easier and I don't feel as uncomfortable using the camera. To be honest, most of the time I forgot that I was holding a Sony A7 because it actually felt that different with the deeper grip. But absolutely fantastic. One thing that is still the same and I wish they improved on, which yes, with the SD card slots, they did change them both to XC2, but as we've been saying, for many years, the card's still put in the wrong way. So 
Hopefully with the Mark V, the cards will be swapped back the right way. The user experience of the camera, the EVF, the autofocus performance is still brilliant, very fast, very accurate. And now with the addition in video for eye autofocus as well, this really makes the R4 a significant improvement from the R3, which to be honest, when I saw the announcement, I didn't really feel it was that big of a difference. But after really using the camera, feeling it in my hands and going around with it, playing with what you can actually do with the camera and the brand new sensor is absolutely crazy with what you can get out of it. I feel like the R4 might be a viable upgrade for those who are currently on R3s looking to get a bit more dynamic range and just a bit more fun out of the camera. Today's sample images were shot using a Sony a7R Mark IV combined with a 24mm 1.4G Master. Because we have an early production model, we had to shoot the images in JPEG as there's no support for RAW files as of yet. However, as expected from the a7R Mark IV, the images are fantastic. They're filled with detail, depth, and most importantly, that new 61 megapixel is dangerously fun to crop with. The cropping power combined with a fast autofocus is a formula for success. The cropped in photos have high levels of resolution, so you can imagine what the full res photo would look like. In addition, we tested the 10 frames per second burst speed and it worked well with the continuous autofocus. All the images came out sharp and it didn't miss a beat. Talking about video, there really isn't much difference in quality, color depth or flexibility than the a7R Mark III. The autofocus, however, is more reliable, and with the addition of eye autofocus continuous in video, that's a pretty neat feature to have. In saying that, the video does still look fantastic, and it's great that you still get the same slow motion capabilities, flexibility, and 4K video. The Sony a7 Mark IV is not a cheap camera. However, with these improvements and features, it looks to be a favorite amongst high resolution camera lovers. To sum up, the Sony a7R Mark IV is a vastly improved camera from the R Mark III and Sony really listened to their customer feedback and implemented some of the features such as getting rid of those damn flimsy doors as well as implementing continuous eye autofocus into their video segment. Finally, is the Sony a7R Mark IV a worthy upgrade for users of the Sony a7R Mark III? If you're a landscape photographer, studio photographer, or enjoy printing large prints and doing a lot of work in post-processing in terms of cropping and dynamic range, the A7R Mark IV is a worthy upgrade from the R Mark III. If you are a video user, there's not too much difference in the R Mark III and the Mark IV, so it may not be worth leaving the R Mark III for this camera. However, if you do a lot of interviews, on-the-go shooting, and don't really do a lot of manual focus, the autofocus continuous in autofocus works effectively. So if you think that will benefit you, then the R Mark IV is a great upgrade. All in all, this camera is a big step up from Sony and it's gonna be really exciting to see what they put out down the track for their A7 series, as well as please, please their A7S series. It's been long out of date and we'd love to see a brand new iteration for the video people. If you have any questions on the Sony a7R Mark IV, pop them in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, as well as our written blog to stay up to date with our latest workshops and events happening in store. If you would like to pre-order the Sony a7R Mark IV, pre-order links will be available soon and they'll be located in our pinned comment as well as our description below. And as always, if you enjoyed our video, hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future updates as we upload videos weekly.